We're going to get started by going to the iMovie edit menu and importing movies. And that'll bring up this dialog where we can browse to the folder where we're keeping our movies that we want to import. iMovie calls those events. We'll create an, an event name so we can easily find our materials. And some of the information here that you're going to be looking for is in the Save To dialog. That hard drive has got plenty of space, but you're going to want to make sure that that uh, is the case for you. And also, if you have a bunch of other disks, you'll be able to browse to the disks under that uh, Save dialog. In this case, I'm also going to move files as opposed to copying them, and uh, I'm not going to optimize the video. I want to keep it fairly large and hit Import. Okay, once the video is in, I can take my cursor, and all I need to do is move it over the event, and it will preview in the preview window. And notice that I'm not clicking and dragging, I'm just moving the mouse. The uh, slider here controls the level of detail that you're seeing in the event, so all the way up to um, you know half a second, where each one of those little tiles is represented uh, that amount of time all the way up to just showing one thumbnail that shows it all and you'll find that there's a, a use for any number of those levels of detail and we'll, we'll see that later. Um, in the project window, uh, click the plus button, create a new project, name it, and you'll want to keep the aspect ratio at 16 by 9 in most cases. What I'm doing here is click, hold, drag over the area of interest in an event and then hover the cursor so that it turns into the little hand and then I can click, hold, drag and release to the project window. So if I place my mouse at the beginning and hit hit the space bar, uh, the event will play in the project window, and space bar also pauses playback. There's a little gear wheel uh, at the bottom left of the beginning of any event clip, and there's a variety of options. In this case, I'm going to choose the audio adjustments and bring the volume down and essentially take the placeholder uh, audio out, click done. Uh, reason why I'm doing that is to voice over with uh, instructions. Uh, and then we can continue to select the portions of the presentation that are essentially not video. And reason why I do that is because you have to record a screen capture of the presentation and because you already have the video as an asset playing through it just extends the time that you're doing the screen capture so it's faster in this workflow and it was more efficient for me one thing that will happen if you work in this manner is that you'll come to a area of the presentation where you need more time over a particular slide and the way that you need to handle that is to add a freeze frame You'll place your cursor on the area that you want to create a freeze frame and then control click to get to the sub menu and then choose add freeze frame. That will add a thumbnail next to the clip and one of them is going to be a four second duration. That's the default still image. The other one is usually just an artifact. So it might be just a fraction of a second. You could delete that but then you want to change the duration to get a ballpark of the time you think you're going to need to voice over and so you'll double click it you'll enter in the duration in the duration field and then click close and then you'll see it kind of pop out to be that longer duration the next major task is simply to build out your sequence and so it's just a process of making selections refining those selections click hold drag and drop those to your project 
and get to the point where you have all your material in rough cut form. I'm going to import more movies now, and these are going to be the actual video examples that I show in the presentation. So I've built out everything that isn't a video, and now I'm going to use the import movies from the edit menu and find the files that I used in the keynote originally and go from there. So now that those clips are imported, they're their own little event section and I've adjusted the uh, view so that it's just showing one tile that represents everything and now switching it to a little more detailed view so I can get the selection a little bit more refined so that's a good example of when you would toggle between those different views So now we're going to get ready to do our voiceover, and what we'll do is in the center column, we'll select the mic little microphone button, and a little inspector window will pop up, and we'll check our levels, and make sure the recording device is the right one. In this case, we're using an external H2 recorder, and then it just tells you to click on a clip to start recording. I'm going to kind of cut to the chase here. Today I'm going to be speaking a little bit about digital essays and their use in instruction here at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And talk a little bit about my personal experience with multimedia. First of all, I'm a consultant at LNS Learning Sports Services, serving the College of Letters and Science, and became involved with digital media assignments uh, through the Engage Award, as well as just helping faculty who want to get involved with this. My background with media arts, it was officially in, uh, so here we go. So I like some of that, but I took a misstep and didn't know how to transition. So I'll exit the audio recorder. And this is the, the stuff that I was doing. And I know that the end is junk. So I'll go into this gear wheel, go to clip trimmer, and then this new window pops up. And I know that the audio waveform, when it goes flat, is a pause. And so that's going to be a good ballpark place to start. And then I'll review by hitting the space bar. So my background with media arts, that was at the right spot. So I'll drag the handle at the end back prior to the end of, or sorry, I'll drag it back prior to the beginning of that statement about background. I think I'll keep that first section and then just continue to build out the voiceover. So I'll place it just after that first recording. I did my graduate education in media arts at University of Montana, Missoula, and came back to Wisconsin and found there was lots of stuff going on digital but I remembered my history of media production as Commerce 355. This is 1996, pre-digital. So back to reality here. What I need to do is simply extend this slide And the way that I do that is first adjust my view because I need to see a little more detail of like when is that really truly near the end. So right about there, if I control click right where my cursor is placed in the project, it's gonna allow me to add a freeze frame. Now, because a freeze frame 
can be made a certain number of frames essentially it could be an unlimited duration if this was video you can't like just fabricate new video um, but because this is just a static image I can extend that for as long as I really need to um, because I didn't have it exactly frame accurate it's created this two second clip that contains a little bit of the still image but I think I think that's okay and it's added by default for seconds which I think will be enough um, but perhaps not because you can see that there's a little bit of overlap of that voiceover that extends into the actual video clip so the way that I would address that is to double click on the still image and choose a new duration that gives me a little more flexibility to explain and set up that video clip and I can always trim it back so I'm gonna make it 12 seconds I'm having applies to all stills unchecked because I just need more control over each individual thing that I do here click done and you can see that that voice track just essentially kisses up to the beginning of the media file so let's and I can also snug this back a little bit hover my cursor where I want to start the preview and press play It's, and you know what, this is not exactly what I want to say. And I was just trying to stuff in something to fill that short amount of time. So I want to keep... So I'll keep that. Just basic sort of exposition. Um... done and I'm gonna go back here and go back to the voiceover tool And when I came back to the University of Wisconsin, you know, roughly 10 years after graduating in 97, I found that there was a lot going on that was digital in nature. But one of the things I was surprised about was that it seemed to be more emerging than it was in Missoula. This is a picture, a snapshot in time of the kind of digital media assignment before there was digital this was Commerce 355 this was a group project that we did in that course and it highlights that prior to the sort of digital revolution you really had to be in a communications discipline to do this kind of work and now that everything is more democratized you're seeing these kinds of projects implemented all across the university. And so now this is what digital media assignments really looks like. And all right, I'm starting to make some errors here. So what I'm gonna do is stop the recording and keep some of it, but edit out what I don't need. And that's gonna be the same technique that we've used in the past. So it's sort of rinse, wash, and repeat as far as these basic techniques. And so you'll build out the rest of the voiceover in the next clip, I'm going to show how to do a cutaway as a final editing okay, technique. So here, again, 
in editing nomenclature, they call it a cutaway. And I use two cutaways here. The first thing is that in iMovie, they try and simplify it for you by default. So they disable that feature in preferences. And so you have to go into preferences and show advanced tools to have the capability to do a cutaway. So you just enable that in preferences, exit out of that, starting with the motion graphic here. So click, hold, drag, maybe, you know, 6.6 .6 seconds, click, hold, drag, find generally where that area is again and release and it's going to ask what do you want to do with this and instead of choosing any of those other things you choose cutaway and it kind of creates this second layer visually on top of that so the there's continuity of this clip existing underneath so that when it finishes the sequence playing above it will come back to where that was. Dissipating in water, there's an effect of a mirror image and speed is being... I end up recording three, four different versions of what I want to say. And if I played them all back, they'd play all simultaneously and it would just be a big, um, muddy cacophony kind of thing but what you can do is be like oh okay I, I like this one I'll keep that one oh, this one's garbage I'll just delete that you can see that even a workflow that's designed to be straightforward and simple is very complex and it can be overwhelming so it's really good to think about whether or not you need to use this kind of editing for instance if your lecturer doesn't have visuals it would be so much more simple to use an audio recorder and deliver your lecture in that manner. But I think for me, this is worth it because this presentation was very visual. It had every kind of different kind of multimedia in it, including the animations and the slides and the video clips and audio. And so the time that I put into this, I think is really worth it, especially in light of the fact that it ends up being a shorter online presentation than it would have been in person. And Having the opportunity to include the multimedia files in total in the online course is like another side benefit. There are several other really good resources about how to use iMovie, many of them coming from Software Training for Students or the Design Lab, uh, and also online movie courses that are from lynda.com, which are excellent. Those are listed in the resource page of this module. Again, thanks for watching and Good luck.